I know, I know. The game you guys are seeing here is Star Citizen, but we are currently 30 days out from one of the largest game releases, I think in my lifetime, and I wanted to take some time to just fly around a little bit. I'm up here in my Freelancer Misk right now, and I'm currently orbiting Everest Harbor. Truth be told, Star Citizen is the closest thing that scratches that itch of a space game that I want to invest tons of time into, but it falls short in so many ways since it's still in early development even after 10 years. I wanted to take some time to discuss my hopes and worries for Starfield and go over some of the information that we know about the game leading up to the official launch on September 1st. And before you correct me in the comments, that date is if you pre-order the game. If not, you get to play it on September 6th. Before we hop into Starfield, I want to give a shout out to the channel partner, BenQ Mobius, who has been supporting the channel in 2023, providing me with a complete monitor overhaul, as well as you guys with monthly monitor giveaways. Now, we missed July completely, but I am back here August 1st with a brand new giveaway that you can enter right now by clicking the link down below. BenQ have some of the best gaming monitors with their Mobius lineup, and this month, we're actually giving away a 32-inch 4K designer monitor to a lucky viewer in North America. With incredible color performance and factory-calibrated accurate color reproduction, the PD3205UA, that's a mouthful, it's a monitor for all of my designers out there creating whatever it is that you're creating. Whether you're a digital artist, 2D, 3D artist, these kind of monitors would help so much in your workflow. Now, normally we give away gaming monitors, but this time I opted to do something a little different and support the artists out here doing things on a more creative wavelength. With audio powered by Travolo, these things are powerhouses on your desktop and are now completely powering my two PC workstation setup. Click the links down below to enter the giveaway and check out their entire lineup on their website. Let's get back to Starfield. So Starfield is launching in 30 days and I'm here to discuss everything that I am excited for and a little bit nervous for as well in regards to the game. Let's talk about some of the most exciting features in my opinion for Starfield. Number one, the ship customization. The one thing I really enjoy about Star Citizen is the ships, obviously. I mean, what, what else is there? Having that connection to your Drake Cutlass Black or the Freelancer Miss is, is awesome. And those two ships have been what really keeps me entertained when I actually jump in and play Star Citizen. In Starfield, however, you can fully customize your ship down to the individual modules that make up the spacecraft. The building blocks remind me of another game called Crossout. It's a free to play game from Gaijin that allows you to build vehicles in a very similar way and then destroy one another with them. That's another great game if you haven't played it. I do have a video on this channel, check it out. But what's really cool is that every module determines your ship's performance and attributes. So imagine putting like a botanist lab within your craft that allows you to grow and tend to plants while you travel, or if you wanna build the biggest gunship, you can, or a lightweight cruiser, you can do all of that. The one thing I hope for is to be able to name my ship, because obviously I'm going to call it the USS Enterprise and travel the galaxy with it. I've been watching The Expanse and I finally made it through the first slog of episodes and I am fully invested in that show now. And just hearing them call their ship the Rasanante, just it's getting me super pumped for this game and I really hope we can name our ship. On top of being able to actually hire NPCs to crew and manage your ship, like that is such dream level shit for me. And the fact that the ones that you do hire have different attributes and skills that can contribute to the upkeep of your ship in different ways, like it's just so dope. Number two, weapon customization. We know in Starfield that you can customize your weapons with a plethora of different mods, changing the stats, appearance, and functionality of the weapons themselves. This includes things like stocks, sights, receivers, muzzles, and more. The depth of the weapon customization is something to behold in a game already this massive. And as someone who is looking for a customization system that is deep, but not Tarkov level deep, I think this is gonna fit perfectly for me. I'm glad they went this route and didn't do the Borderlands route where there's like a million different weapons. It really just gives us that, that more personalized feel and more immersive experience. We can customize our ship, our character, our weapons. Everything about the game can be tailor-made to what we want. And that is just so huge in an RPG for me. Character customization. 
So we know the basics when it comes to character customization in all RPGs, but what makes it special in a Bethesda RPG is all the other things that come along with it. Things like traits, specifically tailored to give your character more depth with pros and cons associated with them. Now, the great thing is that they're completely optional and we've already seen a few in the wild already. Things like Dream Home. So you own a luxurious customizable house on a peaceful planet. Unfortunately, it comes with a 50,000 credit mortgage with Gal Bank that has to be paid weekly. The fact that we can just own houses in this game is already exciting, but I like that you could choose to start out with one, but you're just always in debt, like <laughs> it's a little close to home. Alien DNA. You volunteered for a controversial experiment that combines alien and human DNA. As a result, you start with a higher health pool and greater endurance, but healing items aren't as effective. Or something like Spaced, where your body has become acclimated to space. Health and endurance are increased when in space, but decreased when on the surface. That just reminds me of the expanse going from, you know, Mars dropping down to Earth and just feeling the weight of the gravity because they're acclimated to space. The fact that that's even being thought about in this game is just so huge. Factions and quests. According to a video, I think it was released like eight months ago from Will Shen, the lead quest designer for Starfield. We're not going to be locked into certain faction missions and we can play through them all independently, which is a huge plus for me. In his words, you can influence where these factions go and their priorities, but you don't end up in a leadership role or leading all of these factions, which is huge. And then on top of that, random encounters are now planet wide, meaning wherever you travel, you may run into a settlement that needs help or a group of travelers that need assistance. This goes back to what I said I really want to do in this game, and that's just explore. With games, I usually end up going from objective, completing that objective, look at the map, go to the next ping. But with Starfield, I really want to take my dear sweet time with this game, exploring, taking it slow, and just soaking it all in. That's if it works. Which leads me to what I think everybody's main concern is with the game, and that's, will it end up completely fucked at launch? This is the first game being built on Creation Engine 2, and although we don't know much about CE2, this could be a great thing, or it could be very detrimental come launch. Is this a case of Todd Howard's classic, hey, it just works? Or is this something special? We don't know. I will say, it's very sad that this is clearly the most ambitious game release since No Man's Sky, and because of No Man's Sky, because of Cyberpunk, and a plethora of other releases in the AAA space since No Man's Sky, it seems the community is very jaded and cynical going into this launch, and I get it. This has the markings of a traditional AAA launch, at least in recent years. Overpromise, overhype, and underdeliver. That being said, Outside of Fallout 76, which wasn't even made by the main Bethesda team, Bethesda's first party titles have been, all things considered, pretty good. Fallout 4 at launch had major issues on PC in terms of performance, but those were ironed out. It wasn't insanely buggy, but it ran like dog shit. Honestly, if the game launches like Skyrim did, or I would even take Fallout 4 at this point, I would be pretty happy. Granted, this not only feels bigger than all of those games, it is bigger than all of those games. And a lot more problems can arise when you get to this size of an experience, but I'm still excited nonetheless. And if you've been around this channel for a while, you know when I get excited, that usually means that something catastrophic is about to happen, and never in a good way. Now, I'm not in this camp, but there are a lot of Bethesda apologists saying, eh, if the game doesn't work, I'll just wait for the modders to fix it. Stop. Stop accepting mediocrity when it comes to AAA behemoths and billion dollar studios. That's how we get things like Redfall. Listen, I'm going to be doing an uncapped subathon stream for the launch of Starfield over on Twitch. So the more subs we get, the longer I play for. So when it comes to content that week, I'm probably going to be a bit scarce. But if you guys want to know my thoughts on the game and follow along on that journey, you can come through to the Twitch channel. I'm currently planning giveaways for that stream of the game, merch, and more. This is my most anticipated game of 2023, and honestly, I think of all time. I'm trying to go in blind, which is why you haven't seen me talk about the game a lot and not a lot of coverage is coming out, but I really want to share my excitement with my community. So I'll most likely be talking about this in the coming weeks leading up to launch when we start to get more information. We do know that Bethesda is going to be at Gamescom in the later part of August. So we're probably going to get more information there, including a potential launch trailer. And there's just going to be a lot of Starfield stuff coming out over the next few weeks. And I want to share it with you guys. 
I love you guys. Stay safe. Check out the BenQ Mobius lineup down below. Join the giveaway if you're in North America and make sure to like the video and subscribe for everything gaming. My name is Big Fry and I'll see you on the next one.